Hello and welcome to this video review. Today I'm going to talk about Steiner Night Hunter binoculars 8x56 and at the moment these are the latest iteration of the Night Hunter, uh, Night Hunter series. They came out uh, in 2018. They were, they were first shown at EVA 2018. Um, as you probably know Steiner is a, I think at the moment the biggest manufacturer of binoculars in Germany probably even in Europe and they were formed already in the 50s as a company and they really succeeded with production of military binoculars so they, they produced huge numbers of binoculars for the military in the civil market they are definitely the, the sole market leader and the, the benchmark in marine binoculars but also in the hunting segment they are really well known these binoculars the Steiner Night Hunters are one of their most successful hunting binoculars what I ever did and to be honest I don't know which generation in a row this Night Hunter 8x56 already is I wouldn't be surprised that even people at Steiner wouldn't know exactly how many generations uh, they did so every couple of years they uh, update their Night Hunter series a bit they include some new technologies and so on so these binoculars are uh, getting better and better each year or I would say each, each three or four years they make a, a new Night Hunter 8x56. Um, they are a niche binoculars because they focus on those hunters which are searching for the top performance in low light. This is also the reason why these binoculars feature poro prisms. This is something that is almost unseen at other manufacturers at this moment. So from the premium manufacturers of binoculars, only Swarovski is still producing poro prism binoculars. Everybody else switched to roof prism binoculars, mostly Schmidt and Pechan. Zeiss also still produces and Swarovski still produces the Abbe Koenig prism systems. Uh, I do like the, the decision that Steiner stayed with poro prism because poro prism binoculars have many advantages compared to other uh, types of uh, pr prism systems. They are however, uh, however a little bit bigger and um, I would say less modern in, in, its, in their appearance than uh, roof prism binoculars. Uh, this particular model uh, there, are, uh, there is also a Night Hunter 8x30, a smaller roof prism, uh, poro prism model. This one costs uh, roughly 1150 euros and the housing inside is made out of macrolon. This is a plastic type of plastic that uh, Steiner uses already for 40 years to produce their uh, housings of their binoculars. And the reasoning behind is that they produce macrolon binoculars for the military and in military use, they proved and tried and tested so many times that macrolon housings, they work. They are robust, en robust enough, they are durable enough, and they are reliable enough. So why not use them for, for hunting binoculars which are never subjected to such harsh conditions as military binoculars? And with the use of macrolon, you're able to reduce the price. So you're able to offer better optical performance to users for a lower price. Because a lot of other competitors from Steiner they started to produce magnesium housings for their binoculars, which is great. But the question which arises is if, if it's worth the money, because the magnesium housing increases the costs of production and increases the final cost on the market. And Steiner decided to use Macrolon and to offer better optical performance for lower price. Uh, I think this is a, it's a, a sound decision for them. Um, as you can see, they're really typical Steiner design. The rubber outside is also very durable and very robust. Uh, the whole binoculars set, as, as a whole are really, really robust and well made. And they're known for this uh, robustness and reliability. Also, their service is known for this. It's probably one of the best in the industries. I think that uh, Swarovski and Steiner always compete between each other who has a better service. Uh, with Steiner binoculars, you also have a um, very special um, 
offer. Uh, so if something happens with the binoculars which is outside of the warranty conditions, so if you drop them on concrete floors or if you drive over them with a car or something like that, uh, I think for less than 250 euros, if you send back the damaged binoculars, they will repair it, no matter what. And this is, the Steiner is the only company that offers this, at least to my knowledge. Really, really great offer. Uh, the binoculars itself, they work from, I think, minus 40 to plus 55, or minus 25 to plus 55. I don't think that you can ever come into uh, conditions where it would be too cold that uh, Steiner binoculars wouldn't work. Um, they're filled with nitrogen. They have a special system, uh, dual valve system, uh, which um, really it's patented by Steiner and uh, um, it just um, with this system they are able to achieve a complete waterproofness and, and really reliable filling of nitrogen inside. The binoculars are however quite big, so 20 centimeters in, in width and uh, 21 centimeters in height. Um, the focusing is on each eye separated and they weigh roughly 1.1 kilogram. So they are quite big and quite heavy. Even though when you carry them, ergonomically they are not bad and honestly speaking you don't feel the weight that much. I would also say that they are lighter than some other roof prism 8 by 56 binoculars because uh, with roof prisms you have multiple lens elements in their optical construction which makes them heavier. Uh, together with the binoculars you get a carrying bag, a carrying strap, a strap for the bag, the lens covers, the warranty and manual and the warranty is 30 years and you get a cleaning cloth. So the warranty is almost unparalleled in the industry. I think only Meopta still has 30 years warranty and no one else except Steiner. Um, if I go back to the focusing, so the focusing is for each eye separate and you just do the focusing once during the daytime when it's bright and so on, you set each eye correctly and then uh, Steiner calls this sport autofocus, then your eyes will focus through the binoculars. Uh, with this system you achieve quite a few advantages. First advantage is that this is a low light use binoculars. These are the low light use binoculars. And in low light it is sometimes difficult to, to focus with the central uh, focusing knob because there is not enough light that you would see if the object of the observation is really in focus or not. And this is really different with this system where you just let your eyes do the focusing and you know that the, the object in which you're observing is in focus. Uh, this is the first advantage. The other advantage is waterproofness. So you really achieve best possible waterproofness with this system because with central focusing there is always some possibility that uh, uh, somewhere the binoculars are leaking and then you'll have internal fogging when the temperature changes and normally all the nitrogen will uh, get out of the construction if you have some leakage somewhere. Mm. When we talk about the build itself, what is also interesting are the integrated lens covers for the objective lenses. This is very nice. And the click lock system here for the for this carrying strap. So the click lock, this is one of the best systems on the market, even though it's really, really simple. You just do it like this and now you see the strap is already attached. If you want to re attach it, you just have to push it here inside and pull it out. So it works, it's really um, reliable, very simple and much much better than normal slings and everything what's associated, associated with. The optical performance, this will be the next chapter I would like to talk about. Uh, with poro prisms which offer best possible light transmission rate, with really great coatings that Steiner is developing, was developing for years and still is, these are probably the brightest binoculars on the market. And you look, especially if you look at their price point at 1,150 euros, nothing comes close. So individual focusing, poro prism system, great lens coatings that Steiner is developing for more than half a century, 
uh, and 8 by 56 optical config uh, configuration gives you best possible low light performance. And to be honest, for a price point which is for other European brands almost an entry level. Uh, in terms of low light performance, this binoculars can be put side by side with, I know, I don't know, Victory HT 8x40 uh, 54 or Swarovski SLC 8x56, which is which have double the price of this binoculars. Normally they do have their own advantages also, because uh, this uh, sport out of focus on, on each eye separately, uh, it will give you a little bit of um, on, on close, close focusing will give you a little bit um, of problems compared to other to center focusing. So it has its pluses and minuses. But if you want to focus, let's say on five meters, something with this sport out of focus, it will be a little bit more difficult than with the central focusing. What is also true with this type, the the eyepieces basically have only two positions. The upper position, also with this wings at the end, uh, which is again great for low light uh, performance because no light can come to your eyes from the side. But if you're a spectacle wearer, if you wear glasses, then you have to do it like this. And with uh, roof prism binoculars, the eyepieces are more advanced and more, uh, I would say, uh, um, more sophisticated compared to this. Even though this this type of eyepieces also work, but normally for binoculars, let's say for 2,000 euros or even more, you get more sophisticated eyepieces. The field of view, when we talk about optical performance, is also really good. 135 meters on, uh, on 100 meters, really on 1,000 meters, so 135 meters on 1,000 meters, really, really a lot. And optical performance is just, uh, if you use it in low light it, with this light transmission rate of more than 55, uh, 95%, it's just astonishing. The eye relief is 23, 23 millimeters, which is also astonishing. N almost no other binoculars uh, feature an eye relief, which, is, which would be so long. Um, most of them just end at 20 millimeters. And normally on the outer surfaces you also get their nano coatings which repels water and dust and, and dirt and so on. So if we come back or at the end I always come to the summary when I go through all the features and I like to say like a sweet and sour part. So I go through the sweets and um, all the positives and then I go through the sour or, or the negatives or where is still room for improvement. So what is great with these binoculars? Uh, their price point. If you're searching for binoculars for low light use, you're paying 1,150 euros for, I would say, probably best in class binoculars. This is something what is, um, I would say they're really affordable. They are affordable because they have macrolone housing, not magnesium housing and so on. But when it comes to low light performance, there is not many compromises they did. I also like the build quality, the warranty, 30 years of warranty, it's really great. And their service is, it's really one of the best out there among all of them. Um, I also like the story behind the Night Hunter, Night Hunter. It's really made for all of those hunters who are hunting wild boars and which use their binoculars uh, in low light or when the moon is the only source of light and they have been producing Night Hunter for at least, to my recollection, three or four generations. So they really established the name. Um, okay, what could have been done better? Uh, the size, these are really big binoculars. Um, the weight, they're not the lightest, even though in 8x56 they are probably among the lightest, but in general, they are big binoculars. Normally, for low light use, this is not a problem because you go on a raised stand and you will not walk with them around a lot. Uh, it shouldn't be a big problem. The eyepieces. We know from roof prism binoculars and we see there many, many more um, sophisticated and advanced eyepieces compared to, to this. Even though with this side uh, parts, 
which block all the light which could come to the eye from the side they do work in, really well in low light but the, my main I would say sour point would be that uh, they are a dying breed because uh, the thermal optics is developing really really quickly and at least those people who hunt uh, wild boars uh, they're buying more and more thermal optics and less and less 8 by 56 binoculars it is however true that if you're let's say hunting for a red deer in low light conditions with these binoculars you'll be able to see the trophy you'll be able to judge the animal much better than with a the thermal so in many situations the classical mechanical binoculars still have an edge and advantage compared to thermals um, okay I'm finishing this review if you're searching for low light binoculars for around 1000 euros this is probably the best choice you can buy if you're searching for a compact light binoculars or for mixed use I would suggest you check 8x42 binoculars and others a little bit smaller lighter and more compact if you like this review please check our other reviews and in general if you like our channel please subscribe